Good morning. My name is Sally Barrington and I'm talking to you today from St Thomas's Hospital in London to update you on the new imaging guidelines that have been published this week online in the Journal of Clinical Oncology relating to the staging and response assessment of patients with lymphoma. Um, and I've been asked to do this by the Lymphoma Hub. There are two documents that are published this week. The first is the imaging consensus guidelines and the second is revised staging and response assessment criteria which are entitled the Lugano classification. These two documents are the product of two years work which has involved widespread consultation with international clinical trials groups um, active in the area of lymphoma research and also international cancer centres. The reason why we felt the guidelines were needed was because there have been a number of developments since the previous guidelines that were published in 2007, mostly relating to imaging. These are the introduction of PET-CT, which has now almost completely replaced PET, and also the use increasingly in clinical trials and in practice of a method for PET reporting called the five-point scale, also referred to as Deauville criteria. So we really felt it was timely that these guidelines were brought up to date. So key recommendations are that PET-CT should be used for the staging of FDG avid lymphomas. The reason for this is twofold because PET-CT is more accurate for staging patients with FDG avid lymphomas than CT and this should result therefore in fewer patients being either uh, undertreated or overtreated. Secondly, it's very important to have a baseline PET-CT scan when you're assessing response because you need to compare the uptake in sites of uh, disease if they're present at response with what was there at the outset. The guidelines also recommend that contrast enhanced CT may not always be required at staging because direct comparison of unenhanced lower dose PET-CT and a contrast enhanced CT suggests that management is rarely altered. So we've now suggested that contrast enhanced CT could be reserved for patients where accurate nodal size is required for measurement in clinical trials, in areas of the world where PET-CT is not available, and also um, in certain circumstances such as improving detection of bowel involvement or in a situation where there is compression of central vessels, for example, by mediastinal disease. In practice, we recognise that many patients will have already had a contrast enhanced CT scan before they get a PET CT, but if a contrast enhanced CT is required, and this hasn't been done, then ideally for patient convenience, these should be done at the same sitting. A further recommendation in the guideline is that we now recognise that PET-CT is very sensitive for bone marrow involvement in Hodgkin lymphoma and diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. And because of this, a bone marrow biopsy is no longer required routinely to stage patients with Hodgkin lymphoma and can be avoided also in many patients with diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. Of course, in other lymphomas where PET is not so sensitive for bone marrow involvement, it is important to continue to perform biopsy. There are a number of recommendations relating to response assessment. Firstly, that PET-CT should be used as standard of care for response assessment in all FDG avid lymphomas. At end of treatment remission assessment, and PET-CT can also be used at mid-treatment to assess response if mid-treatment imaging is indicated in place of CT. The tool recommended for measuring response with PET-CT is the five-point scale. Five-point scale are very simple to use. Basically, the level of residual uptake of FDG at tumour sites on the response scan is scored using a scale of one to five. The level of uptake is compared with the uptake in reference sites, which are uptake in normal mediastinum and normal liver. So it works like this. Score one is no uptake. Score two is uptake that is less than the mediastinum. Score three is uptake between the mediastinum and the liver. And score four is uptake greater than the liver. 
Score 5 is reserved for uptake that is markedly greater than the liver, and this would typically be about two to three times the uptake uh, in normal liver. And this is all detailed in the manuscript. The five-point scale has very good intra-observer uh, reproducibility, and it's also been validated for use at both interim and end of treatment PET. The other advantage of the five-point scale is that you can set the threshold at which a PET scan is deemed positive or negative according to either the clinical question or the research question. So in most cases, score one, two or three would be regarded as a complete metabolic response in patients who are receiving standard therapy, at least at end of treatment remission. However, in clinical trials exploring de-escalation of therapy, then in order to avoid under-treating the patient, it might be better to adopt a slightly more conservative threshold and just to rely on score one or score two to define complete metabolic response. The Lugano classification explains how you can use the Deauville score to assign metabolic response categories which are analogous to those that have always been used for anatomical response, which clinicians feel much more comfortable with. <clears throat> partial metabolic response is analogous to the category of partial response with anatomical imaging, and is defined as a score four or score five with reduced uptake from baseline. At interim assessment, this is likely to indicate responding disease but at the end of treatment, it represents residual metabolic disease. Score four or five, however, with no change in intensity of uptake is referred to as no metabolic response, and this is analogous to the anatomical response uh, category of stable disease. And score four or five with increased intensity of uptake or new lesions represents progressive metabolic disease, again, analogous to the anatomical response criterion of um, progressive disease. Of course, we know that uh, PET-CT isn't perfect and FDG uptake is not only seen in uh, active lymphoma, it is also seen in infection and inflammation and therefore it's very important that if patients are going on to receive salvage therapy, that residual metabolic disease if feasible, is, is uh, confirmed by biopsy. In terms of response assessment, CT is now reserved for low or variably FDG avid lymphomas, areas of the world in which PET is not available, and also for the evaluation of new agents in multiply relapsed disease, um, where data are lacking for PET, and of course where assessment of disease control is much more important than assessing the likelihood of disease cure. There is preliminary data suggesting that the size of residual masses may give complementary information to that obtained with PET-CT. Therefore, it's recommended that where possible, the size of residual masses should be recorded and the location, and this should be prospectively evaluated. There's a lot of interest in quantitative methods to improve on visual assessment, particularly in diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. And these would include, for example, the use of the Delta SUV. It is, of course, crucial when uh, performing quantitative assessments that PET methods are standardised and that uh, imaging equipment is properly cross-calibrated and scanners maintained. Quantitative assessment is being uh, used in a number of clinical trials and I'm sure by the next time we update these guidelines, quantitative assessment will have a uh, clearer role that as yet is not ready for widespread clinical application. PET-CT is also prognostic for patients with refractory and uh, relapsed Hodgkin's lymphoma and diffuse large B-cell lymphoma who go on to receive uh, salvage chemotherapy prior to high-dose um, chemotherapy and autologous stem cell transplant. And it may have a role to identify poor prognosis patients who may benefit from alternative regimens or consolidation, and of course as a surrogate endpoint to test novel therapies. So to summarise, the key recommendations 
are that PET-CT should now be used for the routine staging of patients with FDG avid lymphoma. Because PET-CT is good at assessing the bone marrow, patients with Hodgkin's lymphoma may now be spared a bone marrow biopsy and this also applies to many patients with diffuse large B-cell lymphoma. PET-CT is now recommended as standard of care for response assessment at remission in place of CT and also for mid-treatment assessment if this is clinically indicated. The method of reporting for PET-CT should be the five-point scale, also referred to as the Deauville criteria. The Deauville criteria can be used to assign metabolic response categories that are analogous to those anatomical response categories that clinicians have been familiar with for many years. There's an increasing interest in quantitative applications of PET-CT and these will be explored as potential prognosticators in the next few years. In order for this to be rolled out in clinical practice, we do need standardisation of PET-CT methods in which there have been a lot of advancements recently. The consensus imaging guidelines and the Lugano classification we hope will improve the evaluation of patients with lymphoma and also enhance the ability to compare the outcomes of clinical trials.